lesson 5.4 is on dividing fractions. All right, to divide fractions, it's an extra step uh, beyond what we were doing in the last lesson with multiplying fractions, and it involves something that are called reciprocals. Reciprocals are two non-zero numbers whose product is one. And probably the easiest way to think of a reciprocal is to take a fraction, make the denominator the numerator, and make the numerator the denominator. And as you can see, I have some examples here. The reciprocal of 2 over 5 would be 5 over 2. And the idea here is that 2 over 5 times 5 over 2, well, the 5's cross cancel and the 2's cross cancel. So I have 1 over 1, which is 1. I have two numbers whose product is 1. And again, the easiest way to think of it is if it's in a fraction, just kind of flip it. Make the denominator the numerator and the numerator the denominator. So the reciprocal of 1 over 9 would be 9 over 1, or just 9. The reciprocal of negative 4 sevenths would be negative 7 fourths. Notice that the sign does not change. The reciprocal of a positive is a positive. The reciprocal of a negative is a negative. Now in the next example, it's not written as a fraction. It's written as negative 10, an integer. So I'll just put it over 1. Think of it like that. Now if I flip it, if I write the reciprocal, I get negative 1 tenth. Now the next one is 0 0.2. It's a decimal, but we know that 0 0.2, 0 0.2 is the same as 2 tenths because that's the tenths place value. And of course, 2 over 10 is the same, dividing top and bottom by 2 is the same as 1 fifth. So this is 1 fifth. The reciprocal would be 5 over 1, or just 5. So to find a reciprocal, you just flip the fraction around. Make the numerator the denominator, the denominator the numerator. If it's not written as a fraction, like the last two examples, you write them as fractions and then invert. Now to do the next key step here on dividing fractions, we have to know what we're going to take the reciprocal of. To divide by a non-zero number, because you can't divide by zero, you multiply by its reciprocal. Notice I'm dividing two fractions here. I leave the first fraction the same. I multiply, notice, the reciprocal of the divisor, the second fraction. Don't flip them both. Every once in a while I'll get a student that wants to flip them both, make it twice as good. Every problem is wrong now. Leave the first one the same invert the second one, write the reciprocal, and then multiply, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, just like in the last lesson. All right, we'll try some examples here. Let's find the quotient, which of course means to divide. You can tell that also by the division symbol. I have seven, in the first example, seven twelfths divided by two thirds. Seven twelfths divided by two thirds, we're going to rewrite that using the definition that we just had about multiplying by the reciprocal. So we are going to rewrite this as 7 twelfths times the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 over 2. Now, if we're lucky, it'll simplify a little bit, and this one does. You can cross cancel. Now, you remember, this is division. This is multiplication. You can cross cancel multiplication. You cannot cross cancel division. Don't try to cancel a 2 and the 12 or anything like that. Only after it's been written as a multiplication problem, an equivalent multiplication problem, then you can look to see if something might cross cancel. The 3 and a 3 out of the 12 leaves a 4. So that gives me 7 times 1 on top, 4 times 2 on the bottom, that's 8. There's my answer, and it's already in simplest form. The next example, I'm dividing two negatives. That, of course, means it's going to be positive. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be negative 6 fifths. And again, after I have inverted to multiply, I look for cross-canceling. 3 goes into that once, 3 goes into that twice. So it looks like negative times negative is positive, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 5 is 5, and my answer is a positive 4 fifths. My next example, I have one of each, one positive, one negative, so I know that my answer is going to be negative. I invert the divisor, get this all set up. I look to see if anything might cross cancel. A little bit does here. I can knock out a 4 here, with a 4 here leaves a 2. So I have positive times negative is negative. I have 2 times 4 is 14. I have 11 times 1 is 11. Now, that's an improper fraction. An improper fraction is not the worst thing going around, but I'm going to change it to a mixed number by dividing. 11 goes into 14 one time, so this would be negative 1 and 3 left over, 3 11s. 
Down here, I threw in a mixed number. They're both positive. My answer should be positive. My first step is to change the mixed number into a fraction. So 6 times 9 is 54 plus 1. This is 3 eighths divided by 55 6, which is 3 eighths times the reciprocal or 6 over 55. Now, not very much simplifies here, but I can knock out a 2 here. 2 goes into that 3 times, 2 goes into that 4 times. And that's all I have that's going to cancel out here. So I'm multiplying the numerators, that's 9. I'm multiplying the denominators, careful now. 4 times 55 is 220. And even though it looks like it might simplify, it, it doesn't. That's already in simplest form. Both of these uh, numbers here in this division problem are mixed numbers, so I'm going to change both of them into fractions. 10 times 8, uh, 80 plus 7, this is 87 tenths, divided by 5 times 2 plus 1, this would be negative 11 fifths. I have a positive divided by a negative. I know my answer is negative, but first, invert and multiply. I invert the divisor. Write the reciprocal, now I'm going to multiply before I do, and I know my answer is negative, before I do, I, I notice I can knock out a 5 here and a 5 here, leaves a 2, and so that gives me 87 times 1, which is 87, and 2 times 11, which is 22. Now this answer is improper, I'm going to go ahead and take one extra step, rewrite this, I'm going to divide, this is negative, uh, 22 goes in 87 almost 4 times, but it's 3 with 21 left over, and you keep the same denominator, negative 3 and 21 20 seconds. It's kind of wild. This next one, I don't have a mixed number, but I do have an integer here. I'm going to put it over 1 because I want to write it as a fraction so that I can write the reciprocal here when I change this to an equivalent multiplication problem. 10 over 1 becomes 1 over 10. Invert and multiply, nothing cross cancels. I have a negative times a positive that's negative. 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 10 is 50, and there's my answer. Now, they might make the problem look like this type, but it's still a division problem, just like the ones I'm doing up, I've done up here, but you have the extra step of substituting in for the x and the y. It says evaluate the expression x divided by y if x is 9 14 and y is negative 2 thirds. So x is 9 14 and I'm dividing this by negative 2 thirds. So this is 9 14 times negative 3 over 2. Well, I have a positive times a negative. I know it's going to be negative. I look to see if anything might cross cancel. Nothing does. So I multiply the numerators, 27. I multiply the denominators, 28. And that, as it turns out, is also in simplest form. So that's my answer. Now let's make this uh, work for us in a uh, uh, story problem form. It says Kim mixes two gallons, which are 32 cups, of punch for a cookout. If each of the tumblers she plans to serve the punch in holds two and one-third cups, how many tumblers can she fill? Which is another way of saying two gallons holds how many two and one-third cup size tumblers. So I'm going to take the 32, that's how many cups in the two gallons, and I'm going to divide it by the size of one of the tumblers, two and one-third. Well, this is 32 over 1 divided by 2 and 1 third. I'll change that to a fraction. This I just put over 1. This would be 3 times 2, 6 plus 1. That would be 7 over 3. This is 32 over 1 times 3 sevenths. Invert and multiply. Nothing cross cancels, unfortunately. So it looks like I can get 96 on top and 1 times 7 on the bottom. 7 goes into that, let's see, 1, uh, 3, with 5 left over. So 13 and 5 sevenths. How many tumblers can she fill? Well, she can't quite fill the 14th one, but she can fill 13 tumblers. She just runs out a punch before she fills the 14th one. 13 and 5 sevenths means not quite 14 complete tumblers. All right, remember, just like with the multiplica multiplication, uh, the division, you have to be very careful of your signs, you have to be very careful with your mixed numbers and such, and remember, as always, practice, practice, practice.